somebody itself has a lot to offer, it's got accommodations, it's got food. So basically if you are stranded there, at least you've got somewhere to stay the night. I won't be returning, I'll be spending the entire day there, so I'll let you have to take all those kind of fish. to the island which is called Ishmael. Sorry, just a, I got a bit of seasickness. Oh, I thought I was going to buy seasickness because it was so rough. I don't know whether it's regular or not. Well, that's how it was. But the worst part is I've got to go back on it on the way back. It's alright. There's a spa. I'm going to see if I can get some motion sickness tablets or something before I go and see the greatest tourist attractions that are on this island. I think I'll rent a bike while I'm here. Right, so just made it to the west part of the island. I'm going up this uh, new tourist, sorry, this new landscape, sorry, land site called the Dune Astiera, which is a, an old fort. It's a tourist attraction, so it's like a uh, it's like pay commission. I s just cycled all the way from the west side of the island. It really heavy, in heavy rain as well. And the worst part was I lost my hat. I love that hat. It's okay, I can get another one. I'll probably get another one when I'm still here in Ireland. I'm only here for a few days. So. Uh, Highland Schmiland. <laughs> Mind you, it has been a very long day. I mean, the boat here was very really rough, but the worst part is, you know, I've got to go back the same way on that same boat. It's going to be tormenting, but it's okay, it's worth it to get a few photos and to make a vlog for you guys. It's definitely worth the travel. I'm a thousand miles away. I'm going a thousand miles away. So, here I am. Don Adris, oh, sorry, I forgot it was called again. <laughs> uh, here I am at the very end. What, the farthest of, this is basically one of the farthest points of Ireland has to come. I mean, you can't get any further than this. And right over there is the ocean, a uh, bit further up, is the Northern Atlantic. Yeah, that Northern Atlantic, I think it was, yeah. So, and if you go like, just over a thousand miles that way, you reach America. <laughs>
Right, so right behind me is what's called the Antarama. Don't know what that is in Irish, but there's actually an airstrip right here, so they do do planes, just like charter planes. I have to say, for somebody who hasn't cycled in over three years, well, five nearly, I've, pre I've done pretty good. I mean, I'm, I, I went from one end of the island all the way to the other in just a few hours, in just like two hours or less. I have to say, that's like interesting. I have to say it's been a, bit, been a pretty bit of a good day. I mean, I managed to got some exercise and got to see some of the best sights ever. I should cycle a bike more often. I don't know why I stopped. I have no idea why. <laughs> right. I think, you know, I'm going to get some dinner and then I'm... Yeah, because I need to... The thing was, the, the boat was about rough. It was a rough ride, you see. I was starting to get motion sickness, so... I need to get some food fast before my last boat, which is at four o'clock. And apparently there's no boats tomorrow, so this is my only way off the island. Oh dear. And I've got so many places to see tomorrow and the day after. Yeah, I've still got the rest of the week to cover. Um, should I continue or... I'll tell you what, I'll keep going when I'm back on the mate. When I'm back on the mainland, I'll keep filming. So after spending a whole week in Ireland, I've just come to my last day. By the way, this is the next day over, so... <laughs> um, I'm at a place called Lockie, which, you know, there's a lake called Lockie. It's near a place called, a small town called Boyle in Ireland. And fortunately, it's been raining a lot, so there's nothing much I can do, you know, like, I don't want to get wet. You know. I think I might just head to... I might just head back to Dublin. I mean, I've got to go back to Dublin anyway to return this car and get my flight. I might go back there and see the Guinness... You know, the Guinness... It's a place where they make Guinness because it's a tourist attraction. Because, uh, unfortunately, I've... I mean, so much from my last day in I So much from my last day in Ireland and it gets... And it rains. It's alright. It was worth it. The other days were... All the other days I spent here were worth it, though. I mean, driving and yeah, driving abroad is not not, not too bad really. I mean, the ro the rules are very sim. Sorry, the road rules around here. Are, sorry, highway code here is quite similar. Just a few different signs, and they do kilometres instead of miles. So, I mean, if I drove one of these in England, I mean, I would go to Northern Ireland, but unfortunately, I can't take this car to Northern Ireland. So, and besides, even if I did, it would be a lot confusing with the gauge. 60 miles an hour, so I have to do, uh, have to do 100 and, sorry, I, if I want to do 60 miles an hour, I'm going to have to do 100, 100 kilometers an hour, for example. No, 90, 95, sorry, 90 kilometers, sorry. This is so confusing in my maths. <laughs> so here I am, in the Guinness Storehouse, one of Ireland's most greatest tourist attractions. <laughs> I don't really like Guinness, but I thought, why not, next try. Go and see what's inside. Just gonna see if I can get tickets. So, another fine example of how Guinness is made. It's like most beers. Um, we'll start with the ingredients. Barley, grip, soy oil, soy barley, oils, fermentation. Soy cooking and water. The barley gets roasted at only exactly 232 degrees. It goes roasted at exactly 230 degrees and then it gets milled, mashed, boiled, <laughs> then it gets cooling again. And then they add in the yeast and sugar, which makes the which makes the alcohol into the whole mixture of water, barley. And oils. Fermentation. It takes several days to fermentation. It takes several days to make barley. I can't remember exactly, but it takes a while. Sorry, no, it takes several days to make Guinness. Eight days, it says. No. So basically, it takes a long time. It takes a long time and a lot of work 
to get into a handful to turn a handful of grain into a into a nice can, into a nice pint of Guinness. So I'm about to get into the tasty ones. One of the most brilliant parts of the tour itself. Of course, you know, it's like a few exhibits. I mean, I was. I'm not going to taste anything because I don't really like this, but it takes me hard with it. So. I'm so excited. Can't wait. So here I am at Dublin Zoo. I'm in the elephant expedition. I mean, I was actually shocked to think they actually have an elephant here in Dublin. <laughs> I mean, it must have been really, really expensive transporting them across the water. They're African elephants too. <laughs> that makes sense. Right, let's go find. Let's go find it. Oh, look at that! A beautiful creature. An elephant. I never thought I'd actually see a real elephant. That is beautiful, that. That is amazing. <laughs> Trying to clean himself. Somewhere there is a snow leopard. Oh, he's hidden. Oh, oh there it is. I don't know if you can see it, but... Oh, what a fantastic creature. What a fantastic creature. Hello. Hello. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, what fantastic. I'm getting a few fantastic shots of this. Shut up, you seals. Oh. Ah, now this is a perfect shot. And so, as, as the last thing for the day, off my bucket list. And so, lastly for today, the Wellington Monument. Don't know what it is and I don't care. <laughs> Just want to see it. And that's it for Ireland. <sighs> I'll be sure to come back next year. Hopefully, there's better improvements. But mind you, you know, it's been amazing. I mean, despite a few disappointments, it still turned out great nevertheless. Right then, uh, It's actually really nice, I don't know why. Maybe Wellington's compensated for something. Right, that's the end of today. Next stop on my tour, Barcelona. Currently in Amsterdam. Just had some just had some space cakes. I mean, to be honest, they tasted really you know, they tasted like almost like Addictive, like you know, like just want to eat and yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can't think any different. I don't know. I can't tell the difference of what I'm <laughs> whether I'm on cannabis or not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's really hard to think, but oh, it is. it's gonna take over my. It's gonna take over my stress. <laughs> And I'm in the red light district, apparently. 